Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern and uh, I hope you're all having a really good time over the Christmas holidays and um, and it's good to be back up in the loft um, yes we're at Jarrow Road still for one more final episode yeah there's something missing so let's have a look last time we had a look at the cunning plan and um, as I was ticking all the boxes I realized that something was missing and it was gonna go there it is the bus stop so let's head over to the bench and uh, let's have a look at what I had in mind and this is what I had in mind um, it's a retro bus shelter um, you find this particular one in Brighton um, they have about three or four of these in a row at the uh, Brighton Town Centre and um, they are quite nice to look at um, let me see if I can find a better one there you go now this one's slightly different um, as you can see it's all open at the front um, the one that you just looked at has this curve which comes along a, a little bit further so yeah it's slightly different there and you can see there's another one at the back there and then there's another one further on and um, yeah so this is what I'm going to build for Jarrah Road. Now, I have done a little bit more research into into these types of bus shelters, and um, they were dotted around um, all over the country. Um, this one's particular, <laughs> particularly interesting because this one was found in Scarborough, and uh, it is totally different again. But it is just the style of it it's just so um, well it's just so artistic is the word and uh, there were a few on Merseyside as well so yeah, so if we go back to that one so that's what I've got planned for Jarrah Road um, right and this is what I've come up with so here we have the back of the bus shelter where there's a small entrance you can go in and then wait for your bus the bus is there and this is the front where it's open but I don't think I'll be putting in those um, poles that you see in the picture there's like three poles that hang down there's one in the middle and there's one there and then there's one there as well so I'm not sure about that so I've got an idea on how to make this bus shelter because here's an example of how I want to do the roof so I've got a 1 mil card, a 2 mil card and a 1 mil card again the 1 mil card will be the former for creating this radius shape as we've got here, here and here as well and uh, there's the end view and we've got some sizes there the underside height between there and there is 26 mil with um, two mil card and then one mil card obviously the other one mil card is underneath the roof you won't you won't or you might be able to see it or you might not be able to see it and um, I'm not going to even bother putting a plinth um, on the floor um, so yeah so it's so when it's been when it's finished it'll just sit straight onto the pavement um, before we start we're going to need some tools we're going to need a rule uh, a pen or something of this equivalent that measures 16 millimeters in diameter this is for forming up the glazing and the concrete um, plint of the bush shelters we're going to need a pencil hopefully a bigger one than that one we're going to need uh, an 8 mil washer, uh, which works out to roughly 16 mil in diameter. So you're going to need one of them, and obviously you're going to need 
something a little bit bigger for drawing the roof radiuses um, so I'm using this balance weight which has come off a motor and you need a square for those straight lines so let's make a start I'm, so I'm almost done with marking these out um, for the the top roofs um, so what I'm doing is I'm just leaving the pencil mark on so it might be a few cuts to get this shape right um, as you can see I've already done the underside pieces which go underneath so when it's cut this will be glued to the underside and that there forms the, the shape of the bush shelter as you can see so that's the idea behind that moving on with the roofing um, I'm just rounding over these corners now with a bit of sandpaper because I've already added the super glue which hardens the card up so you can do this um, I'm just taking the corners down to the pencil mark that's on there uh, hopefully that will just form up a nice radius because uh, we need a nice sharp radius when we come to paint these and just make sure that's round and then any raised bits which you will have we just take them off yeah and then once both edges are done you can stick the forming piece on underneath right, so now we move on to the shelter bodies if you like uh, we just use ordinary packaging um, left over from the wheels sheets um, you can manipulate this by using your fingers um, which I have done here I've had to really keep one straight piece and then just form the rest and then use the 16 mil um, that we have with a pen as a guide to wrap it round to make sure that we've got the right diameter so this just ended up being a guide because this is quite tough to form and um, what we do then we add that to our radius of the roof if you like and then we work out where we want to form it next so I'm just getting a uh, felt tip pen a little sharpie and I'm just going to mark where I want to start the radius to come back round on the front here so we just start there and then make sure that the that it's in line top and bottom before you start to roll it otherwise you could end up with the roll going the wrong way as it were now it is quite easy to manipulate this into the radius but you've got to make sure that you don't get no sharp creases hence where this comes in let's just try and flatten it out It's a bit fiddly this, but you can see what I'm trying to achieve. Once you're happy with the way that it's formed up, then it's just a case of cutting off the excess strip. So I've got that flat up against the square, nice and tight, and I'm just going to mark it there and then cut that piece off. And then we can glue that to the roof. What I have found is it's a lot of trial and error to get these radiuses to match the roof radiuses. Um, I mean, you could, if you wanted to, put a base in here and have a little step up in, to go into the bush shelter. But uh, that would 
make it a lot easier I think but um, as it stands I rather I didn't have the step up into the bush shelter so I am still manipulating this piece of clear plastic to try and make it fit around there um, properly as it were uh, I managed to do this one uh, as you can see it's almost symmetrical uh, in the way that it, um, it fits and there's not a lot of shadowing it'll be a little bit round the top but I'm going to hide that with some plastic strip um, for gluing on later on um, so yeah I'm, I'm quite happy with the way that this one's turning out but um, this one is it's almost there I'm having to use a drill bit to just to tweak it a little bit to get round some of the corners to take out some of the flat spots so I'm just putting the drill in there and just doing that with it, rolling it to take some of the flat spots out and uh, hopefully that will then fit in a lot easier right so I've left them for a while and now I am putting on the lower base panel um, basically it's a 0.4 sheet and I've cut it to 7mm strip and what I'll do is I've folded it around all the way around and then I'll hold it there and I'll just mark it with a pencil and cut that little bit off and it doesn't matter if it ends up too long because I can still trim it back and now I can just glue that around the base using that polyurethane cement the quick contact glue because this melts the plastic and it doesn't leave any stain on the glass at all so as you can see I'm using a crocodile clip to hold that in place until the glue goes off um, and then forming it round and hopefully holding it in place melts the plastic onto the clear sheet because it's, uh, it's quite slippery on there at the moment and we'll keep doing that until it's glued all the way around and once it's stuck all the way around then you just have to trim off the excess um, level with the glazing and then that's the lower um, panels done if, as it were and then what I've done here is I've used some 2mm by uh, 0.5 to go around the top and then, then we can start looking at how we're going to do the window frames themselves. For wrapping the top piece round um, it's, it's no different from doing the lower panels um, except that I keep the joint at the back of the shelter rather than the, the front because it's uh, quite tricky to to glue that piece but uh, what I've done there is as you can see I've added um, a 1 mil by a 1.5 mil piece super glued in there and then, then that bit the front uh, fascia piece gets glued onto that at the same time keeping the joint at the back this strip, this 2 mil by um, 0.5 takes a while to melt um, onto this clear sheet so what I do is put a little bit of glue on the straight just half because that's where the joint's going to be and then just let that lie in there until it melts and then once that's melted into all that crevice as it were then we can form it round the bush shelter Once we've glued the upper strip and uh, keeping the joint at the back, we can now focus on um, 
detailing of the glazing as it were. So what I'm doing, I'm going to put a, a strip of 2mm by 0.25 here, here, and then round the back to match up with the ones coming down at the back. And then we'll put in the window frames to suit. So we shall take a measurement of that distance we've got between the top fascia and the panel and it's 16mm. So we shall cut these pieces at 16mm, glue them on um, using the same glue, the contact adhesive, and uh, we shall see what it looks like before we start adding the finer glaze and strips. So now that I've glued those pieces in, I want to create a, a ledge around the base of these windows here. So I'm using some one mil round and I'm using a little bit of plastic weld just to stick it to the top edge of the lower panel. And then that will help when I come to fit the window strips because they can more or less gives it something to stick to. So I'm just slowly working my way around. Just letting the plastic weld do its job. By adding that one mil round um, to the lower panel adds that little extra detail on that bottom edge as you can see just adds that lip. Now you could probably get away with half round but I've used uh, a full round just so that it sits just above the panel and I can get the glue in on that edge. And I've also added a couple of little bits underneath where the half mil, uh, where the one mil round comes to an end, just to stop that end pinging off. Just um, glues that edge together, as you can see there. So what I'm doing now is I'm adding a strengthening piece, seven mil wide, for the back. Um, it's just so that I can glue some seats in there. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to glue that in there and then just glue a panel on the back um, just so I can add some seats so it looks like there's some seats in there. So this is just to, just so I've got something to glue to really. I've made a start on the glazing. Um, <laughs> it's not as simple as it looks. Um, you've got to glue this piece onto the um, frame here and then pull it round but I'm only gluing it on these four pieces of 2.5 strips and um, so all these pieces here and here are loose until we put in the down pieces once all the um, uh, horizontal pieces have been put in and um, so we do a little start with a little bit of glue there where I've got my pencil line just about make it out we might have to hold it there for a few seconds until it gets a hold which is equal in the middle and then we gently turn it over, put a little bit of glue, contact adhesive that is, on to where the pencil marks are. Try not to get any on the glazing. And we just form that round, being very, very careful we don't pull it off of the piece that we've already glued on so we're being very very careful here and then we just press that in place you can feel it when it's got a hold 
and then we should continue all the way around until we're almost back to where we started put a little bit of glue on that piece and we just wait till that gets gets a grip as it were might have to help it a little bit just press it in place And then we can cut it off. Don't matter if it's pings back because it's been cut to the right length and it should go back in place. So we're just going to have to hold that now until the glue goes off. Right, so that's got it. Um, the good thing about this is, as you're looking around, if it's not equal, you can still move them up and down to get them equal, equal spacing size. And then to finish off, we just cover up these joints here. with another strip of 2.5 by 0.2 and um, that covers up the joints and it makes it look quite neat as we've got there. Now I'm adding the 10 by 0 0.30 strips now to create the window frames and if I turn it around you can see how delicate this little job is becoming. Um, yep. So this is the styrene strip I'm using, the 10 by 30, 0.25 by 0.75 to create the glazing strips. So I'm going to do that all the way around. I'm going to split uh, this portion here into three segments. So you'll have three windows at the back there and uh, we'll do the same with the end here is what we've done with this end. So when you look these strips can be a little bit tricky so you can just press gently on the strip to pick it up. It's not doing it now, there you go. And then just offer it up to see if it's going to fit and if it's not going to fit you can always cut a little bit more off, off one, one of the ends and then offer it up again and then it's just a case of putting in a little tiny drop of glue on these three parts here, that one and that one and that one, those three parts there and once it's stuck onto those three parts then you can um, glue the ends if you like the ends of the strip so we'll just put that in there and that should just sit in there nicely now like that and then we can just fiddle with it while the glue is setting that should just go behind there give it a little push at the top and that is going to sit in there nicely to form more window panes and I've got one more to do in the middle. Right, before I paint them I thought I'd uh, show you a closer look before I paint them. Um, yes, uh, I've got a gloss green here which is an emerald green and I've got this gloss light blue. Now, Socialist buses were blue so I'm thinking of blue for the uh, window frames and I'm thinking of the same colour that we saw in the photograph for the lower panels 
in concrete. So it's not quite the same as the um, bush shelters in Brighton, but the idea uh, and the principle is more or less give or take the same. I do enjoy this part of any build because um, painting brings whatever I do to life. Um, you notice I've got this upside down, it's just so I can go in at an angle and not paint on the glass. So this is going to take some time to do and uh, I'm not putting that much paint on the brush so it's just enough I like the look of these already. Um, I think I'll leave the bottoms white. Uh, yeah, because uh, I think it looks quite smart. And if I'd use this matte beige, I think it'd look, look odd. So I'm going to stick with the white. So what I'll do is I'll wait for the um, blue to dry and then I'll do the lower halves in white and the top roofs in grey I think so while I'm adding the white I was just thinking that um, I think these bush shelters would, would have been found uh, in any town, city possibly but uh, yeah times have changed and uh, now we got them horrible square ones aren't we those metallic ones anyway I'm glad I stuck with the white and uh, all I have to do is once this uh, matte white dries is add some weathering powder around the base because uh, in real life these won't be clean for long I just thought I'd uh, share that with you. It's starting to take shape now because I'm painting the top edge of the roof white as well, but not the actual top, just, just the edge. And uh, it just adds that uh, contrast between the blue and the white on the lower half of the bush shelter. So if I just hold that up you can see what I mean. Right so that's the roofs painted. I painted them as satin grey. All I'm doing now is just touching up the um, bottom with a little bit of black weathering powder just to add that little bit of grime because let's face it there won't be quicky clean quick squeaky clean these bush shelters <laughs> so that's what I'm doing there and then I'll, I'll use some um, green slime on the top just to dirty them down and um, yeah um, excuse me madam I'm just um, <laughs> oh, we're going to go mad uh, so there you go that's what I'm doing just very lightly around the base of the shelters there you go just like that 
Yeah, it's been an interesting build. I'm um, putting these together. So this is my take on the Brighton bus shelter. But uh, as I said before, these wouldn't look out of place anywhere uh, in the UK. Mainly on the seaside towns, I'd imagine. But uh, there you go. And uh, yeah, I do like the way that these have turned out. They're a bit fiddly to make, especially the plastic clear sheet uh, rolling at um, to suit the shape of the roof. Um, in the end, with the last couple I did, um, I used a 4mm drill bit, rolled it and then brought it out to meet the radius of the roof. And uh, it seemed to have worked. And here's where I've placed the bush shelter. Uh, remember I made two at one size and two at another. So this is the smaller one. Um, so this one will go here, I think, right outside the northeastern pub. Now it was planned to have a bush shelter over here. But I think it's a bit too close to the traffic lights over there. So I'm going to put it back there. That's the thing about model railways, it's all about decisions and making the right decisions. So yeah, I think it looks good there. Right, on that note, I think that's all from me this week. Um, yeah, and a very happy new year to everybody. And uh, we'll see you again in the new year, hopefully, with some new ideas and new projects to carry on through 2024. But until then, it's bye for now. Bye.